Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering cards becoming too expensive and I am particularly talking about the reserve list. I think the reserve list is, uh, the cards are crazy. These cards are 5 cent cards in my opinion. Uh, Narwhals is maybe a 50 cent card at best. Um, if that's, if you like the artwork and then to me you, maybe you value at 50 cents. It shouldn't be where it is. I think Countdown Maximine, like a lot of these reserve list cards are just like 10, 20 dollars even. And it blows my mind whenever I see them on a website and they're actually selling, they're supposedly selling for these amounts of money. And then the next cycle, they sell for even more. Uh, I have a lot of really interesting collections come via email um, and a lot of older cards, non-reserve list cards. And there is a very big difference. Let me tell you what's happening right now. Let's say that they're trying to sell you legends or antiquities or something like that. So basically they're trying to sell you the junk versions of the cards. And when I mean junk, I mean non-reserve list. Like the commons and non I get so many emails every single week about someone who wants to sell me 2000 legends commons. Again, none of them being on a reserve list, of course, because they're commons. And they don't look good and there is this like panic. So it used to be, this is what it used to be in 2019 or 2015. You used to be able to buy alpha beta readily and power nine would actually show up on your store. And I know this cause I have a video of power nine showing up in my store or at a local store right next to me, like drivable 10 minutes down the road. And they got a huge collection. It was alpha beta, Arabian nights, power nine, a complete set of power nine, um, multiple dual lands, unlimited and so on and so forth. I mean, it was a lot of really, really great stuff. Um, that type of collection became unlimited. So from 2016 to 2017, there was a period where you would, the best collection you could get would be an unlimited collection. And because it was considered white bordered versus black bordered, white border was considered much less. It was considered, and that was also the time where the collector's edition, because of the round, uh, the squares, you know, square was also considered they would also come in. Actually, you know, I had a collector's edition come in. I should have bought it, but um, the asking price was at the time too high. Now roll on to today where revised cards are now considered like, you know, it's, it's so funny when I think about it because no one would ever think revised cards would be expensive, but copy artifacts, Shivian Dragon, uh, Birds of Paradise, I think it's in, yeah, in revised, um, of course. It looks a lot better than Unlimited, by the way, but uh, it's in revised, but it's ex expensive. Uh, fork, wheel, and obviously the 10 dual lands. So revised now rarely comes in. So what does come into the store? What comes into the store is a lot of bulk, or what comes in via email is a lot of bulk, and bulk meaning commons, and suddenly they want a dollar or two dollars per common, which doesn't make any sense because there's not any demand. So these cards are not on any buy list these legends, commons, and these antiquities commons, they're not on any buy list. And is there really a desire for them? No, but there is a desire for reserve list. And this is the history of reserve list. Once revised start going up, you never saw any more reserve list cards come in. And that's when I know something is hot. And that's almost like too late, right? It's almost like the canary in the coal mine and it's dead. And you're like, oh, it died. We should get it out of here. Yeah, but like how, 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 you know, how many hours ago did it die? No one knows, right? It's like, oh, okay, well, it's time to leave now. And that is the reserve list. So I can tell you from actual experience and actually owning a shop and buying collections every weekend, huge collect, sometimes it's a big collection, sometimes this weekend we bought more Star Trek cards. <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess like the guy told his friend and he told like the community of Star Trek people that we were buying and they didn't have any like, out before and now we're just buying stuff. I mean, we still, I mean, it's probably a good profit margin and it looks great. I mean, the cards look really good. I'm really, you know, getting fond of the art, the artist sketches because they're all unique. But back to the uh, magic cards, uh, the reserve list cards. So we saw reserve list cards all throughout. And in 2021, we haven't seen a single collection with, I would say the majority of the art, like a decent amount. So if you opened a booster pack, how many reserve list cards are you expecting out of Legends? Probably one or two, or maybe one, the rare, right? Maybe a, um, yeah, probably one out of every four packs, maybe one out of every three packs at least. No, what people are doing is they're hoarding your reserve list cards and they're trying to sell us a bulk. And that change in behavior tells me everything I need to know. 
That's it. People are hoarding reserve lists. They refuse to sell it for any cost. And instead, they're kind of, so it's kind of like, I have a collection of legends. I haven't looked at it for 10 years. Now let me, let me look at it. Oh, these cards are really expensive. They're on a reserve list. Let me put them on a different pile that I would never sell. That I'm going to keep as quote, invest in it. And then let me sell you the rest. So it's been collection after collection of, you know, bulk, you know, bulk and bulk, but they want like reserve list prices for these bulk because there's this assumption. And I get, again, this might be a huge, great investment for you. I don't know. I personally don't think that a, a reserve list, a legends, non-reserve list common can be sold for two to $5. I, I don't see who would be buying that. Now, if it was a reserve list from Mirage, yeah, it's gonna be sold the next day. So that's the trend I see. Uh, I, I see this trend, I see this trend in Magic, um, and I definitely tell you reserve list is the way to go. It's always kind of been the way to go. And Magic cards are getting more expensive. You can take a look at Collector's Edition, VIP, Masters, Time Spiral, Modern Horizons, all like the cost per booster box you might not remember this, but for a very long time, until Modern Masters won, was always $100 or less, or under. We never had these specialty products that were $200, $300, $400 a box. And it's only until recently we had this explosion, you know, how recent was Mythic Edition, VIP, Double Masters, Masters Edition, even Masters Edition was relatively recent in the lifespan of Magic the Gathering. For a very long time, you knew that a box of Magic cards was, regardless of what the box was, was $100 in, in standard, you know, in retail, MSRP. Now it's the Wild West. I mean, they might be printing a $1,000 box as soon. So if standard is that expensive, then imagine how expensive vintage should be. Because that's the actual collectability aspect of it. I never felt collector's edition was collectible. As soon as people told me about it, I just, I knew it was not, I knew where we were going. And I was like, oh, I need to get out right now. Anyway, hi guys.